you have found what lights you up. I'm your host, Sunny the Life Coach, and I'm here because I see you searching for something or someone out there to help you feel better, something to take away the pain that you're feeling, the inadequacies. I know all of the things that happen in life can leave you feeling empty. Your search is over. This podcast is all about finding your own freedom and power to love yourself enough to shine in the ways you were always meant to, the ways in which you are already fully capable of. If you're ready for some real talk, some serious truth bombs, and a few F-bombs, you are in the right place. Let's do this. Let's get lit. Hey there and welcome to episode 59. This conversation today is going to be a little different and I'm absolutely stoked to bring it to you. I am again having a conversation with another coach, my dear friend, Fanya Atanga. Now, he's a different kind of coach, if you will. Different in the sense of other coaches I've had as guests here, as he's not promoting himself in any way. In fact, Good luck even finding him online. But I have said we kind of have a Venn diagram going between the type of coaching that we do. Fonium is a soccer coach, and I'm sad to report is also a Cincinnati Bengals fan. You all better know that I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, and you'd best know that Fonium and I have had a ton of fun over the years that we used to work together when I lived in Kentucky ribbing each other about our opposing teams. Because if you know anything about the NFL, you know that the AFC North is a pretty serious rivalry. So how I came to be friends with this guy so many years ago is still beyond me. (laughs) Yes, we're going to talk about sports just a little bit, and you're going to have to tolerate that because that's what we do. That's what we've always done. That's usually how we open every conversation. Then we go deeper. And that's exactly how this episode is going to play out. What you're going to hear today is yet another real, raw, and authentic conversation between friends, former colleagues, and fellow parents. We're going to talk about how the pandemic impacted our sense of normalcy and reality, first on the field, then at home, then all the things. He's going to share what it's like to be a human and a male in these times, in this culture, and the ways that we have found to cope with stress, burnout, fallout. So I don't want you to be turned off from this episode if youth sports or pro sports is not your jam. I want you to expect that there is going to be some banter, but also to know that we're going to tie it back to real life because that's just what we do. This is literally a conversation between friends catching up that happened to be recorded, and we're both willing to share it with you because it's really good stuff. It just is. It is life. Now, I will say one more thing for you to be prepared for. This is the first episode where I've ever added bleeps. You know I'll swear all day long if that's where the conversation goes. That's not what I bleeped out. I bleeped the names that he dropped after he told me that I couldn't identify his family members. Then he got lost in the conversation and started dropping names. I mean, I know the names, but you're not supposed to know the names. I love that, though. I love that sinking in and getting comfortable, getting lost in the discussion, and forgetting that you're saying things you said you wouldn't say. Yeah, this is a real, raw, and authentic conversation with another human who has a few things to share, and I'm here for it. We went on for a time because we had a lot to catch up on, so let's get to it. Let's get to this visit with my friend, Fonyam Atanga. Welcome, my good friend, Fonyam, to the podcast. What lights you up, my friend? Hey, Sonny. How are you doing? I'm great. Well, besides you lighting me up, <laughs> what lights me up? is believe it or not my side gig yeah what's your side gig? and and that's where you and i sort of relate because Mm -hmm. 
my side gig involved coaching kids how to play soccer. Mm. Yeah. And I have days where I sit at the office and if I'm having a really rough day at the office, the thing that really keeps me going is what I consider the light at the end of the tunnel is what I'm going to be doing when I get off work. Oh, on that's the field, fantastic. Working with kids. The light at the end of the tunnel. The tunnel. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good one. Tell me about what you do as a soccer coach. Uh, who do you, who do you coach? How, how old are the kids? So I do a variety of different things when it comes to coaching and meaning I coach different organizations mm -hmm. or coach with or for different organizations. I coach at Woodford County High School in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And I also coach a travel soccer club uh, called King's Hammer Bluegrass. That's also in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And part of another part of my duties is as a coach is working for the state of Kentucky um, doing some it's it's sort of archaic now because the Olympic development program ODP used to be the primary way that um, the U.S. national team identified talented youth soccer players for their national team pool okay and it is no longer the primary way of identif identifying players mm -hmm. um but it's still a program that exists for, for for some reason um and that's the other the other side of my coaching gig yeah wow yeah you've got a lot going on outside of work and you have a family Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. that, too. There's that. <laughs> there's that. <laughs> oh, you're a there's busy that. guy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow. And believe me, I have actually dialed back from mm. all the soccer-related side gigs that I used to do. Because I used to do a lot more than that. More than that. Wow. Including doing coaching education around the state. Mm-hmm where I would go and teach courses to aspiring coaches and just a few other things that I probably should not have been doing with a young family, but you know, wow. All wow. for the love of the game. Because it lights you up. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The love of yeah. the game and lights you up. Um, so be, before we go any further, let me clarify, because we have um, listeners worldwide, and I actually have several friends who are French, so <laughs> they might be hearing for sales and be like, what are you what? saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is spelled exactly like Versailles, but because it is Kentucky, it is pronounced for sales. <laughs> and just so everyone yeah. knows, I grew up speaking French as a second language, and the same feeling they're experiencing right now is exactly <laughs> what I experienced when I asked for the first time for directions to Versailles. to Versailles. And no one understood what I was talking about. You are kidding me. My friend, you are full of surprises. I had no idea that French was your second language. Seriously? I had no idea. We have never discussed no. that. No, that well, has never bad. come up. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's something it's, it's like one of those, it's almost like cognitive dissonance. It's like, no, I don't want to say it that way. <laughs> it's, been, <laughs> it's been the same way for me too. And, and by the way, uh, we also have, instead of an Athens, we have an Athens hey, so, well. yes, in, yeah. in, in Kentucky. Remember that? Uh -huh. Athens, it's it's Athens. Athens. Mm -hmm. It's oh. not Athens. <laughs> yes, it's so difficult. It's so difficult for um for those for some of us to just really no grasp. doubt, no so, doubt. Uh, so tell tell the audience where you're from, like a, well, where you're really audience. From. I'm from uh, Cameroon. Cameroon. It's a tiny country, and sometimes I say West Africa. Sometimes I say Central Africa. It's on the coast of West Africa, but it's really in the middle. So it's Central West Africa. Okay. And what uh, brought you here? 
Uh, part school, part just family mm-hmm. migration away from from Cameroon. Yeah, yeah, a bit of both. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. tell me the story because you said you had a story about how a guy from Cameroon came to be a Bengals fan. <laughs> so uh, it's a funny story, really, uh, simply because of how. I ended up in that situation. Mm -hmm. Bengals training camps were always held at Georgetown College. That's right. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, And that in Georgetown, Kentucky. So Cincinnati Bengals and in central Kentucky is not that far from Cincinnati. It's from Cincinnati. About 90 minute, about a 90 minute drive tops. It's a little, it's a little less uh, from, because if you think about it, where they practice and play now mm-hmm. is just right right across the river right so right. from there to georgetown is actually about an hour an hour okay yes okay so so the cincinnati bengals training camp was held in georgetown is it still there i thought it moved is no they there? move it uh it's oh, been okay. maybe four or five years they moved it they're doing it now at uh just at their practice facility Okay, so you were going to college in Georgetown? So I went to Georgetown College. Okay, there we go. And one summer, I decided to stay on campus and work. Mm -hmm. And one of my duties, believe it or not, was to work as security for the Bengals training camp. You're kidding me. This was the year when they hired Marvin Lewis. Oh, my gosh. And so they had a whole lot going on, new coaching staff coming in, doing all these things. And one of the funny stories about that, I'm not going to name the player because I, I, I don't want to I don't want to get anyone in trouble, even though it won't matter now. Mm-hmm. A player came back after curfew. And... Imagine me, a college kid, trying to talk to this guy about returning after curfew mm-hmm. and how I had to write that up and report it no to boy. my superiors. Yeah, <laughs> to your superiors. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know? Um, How'd that go? Well, <laughs> I'll say this now because it doesn't matter. There was no report that was written. Ah, okay. And it's not because he offered me any incentives or anything. Mm -hmm. I just didn't think it mattered. (laughs) It was one of their best players. Gotcha. What was I going to do? You know, write a report about him coming in late, a few hours late after curfew. What? Wow. And and what were they going to do? Suspend him? Fine Mm. him? No, he was going to play anyway. So I just looked the other way while he drove his car full of of friends Mm -hmm. (laughs) over to the uh, apartment building where they were staying. Nice. Nice. That is so interesting. That, that That is fascinating. So all of these years that we have been... Um, you know, ribbing each other about, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you being a Bengals fan and me being a Steelers fan. Stop it. <laughs> you never told me that story about you that's being the, security. That, that's the story. That's the story. That's um, why you're, that's it, why you're so. And I became a fan because my proximity you know, yeah. I, I always like to support teams that are close enough that I, you know, unlike some people, uh, I like to support <laughs> teams who are close <laughs> enough that I can go support them. You know, and uh, yeah, so I'm a big Bengals fan, regardless. I know they're mm-hmm. not very good, mm-hmm. but you know, I'm not a fair weather fan, like like again. Oh like, no, like some people. No, 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 <laughs> no. I don't know anyone like that. I don't now. Oh, you don't now, now. The Dallas Cowboys fans very much fair weather. Well, I didn't want to even bring them into this conversation. <laughs> but <laughs> all right, enough of that. That was fun. Oh my gosh, that was a great story. Uh, what I want to talk to you about today is that uh, your your experience with the pandemic, um, because I heard you 
have an interview with on, a, on another podcast and you were talking about how it impacted the sport and the kids right um, about how your season was just getting ready to kick off last year when um, right. everything was being shut down and all of the confusion and all of the back and forth and all of the right you know uh okay we're just going to sit out for two weeks we'll start the season late and then that didn't right. happen and you know just going through all of that and yeah. also and so I want you to kind of give this audience a little refresher on on that part Mm -hmm. And then I, I have some questions for you around that, probably. Okay. Well, so as I've mentioned before, I coach different organizations. Uh, when COVID forced everyone to go home, if you think about it, the way I relate and try to remember exactly what was going on at the time is March Madness. Because mm -hmm. we were getting at the time of the year where the NCAA schools were getting ready for their uh, conference championships. Mm -hmm. And why that's important is because our soccer season for high school in Kentucky is a fall season. We don't start until July and goes all the way through to November. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't in my high school season. But we were just kicking off the travel soccer season and literally played a game, a couple of games, the weekend before the whole country got shut down. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you mentioned, it was the two-week story. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're going to send everyone home a couple of weeks. We'll just figure out what's going on here, and then we'll be back at it. Mm -hmm. Two weeks turned into four weeks, into eight weeks and eventually that travel season a decision was made it's just going to be null and void we're not going to play we can't afford to put any of the kids and their families at risk because a lot of the competitions that we participated in involve travel mm -hmm. within and out of the state staying in hotels Everyone was still trying to figure out what the safest ways were to have guests at hotels and how do you even feed people because once they're there, you can't just go to a restaurant because restaurants were closed anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was the logistics were just too difficult. So everything was shut down. Now, fast forward from sometime in May when they decided to, we're just not going to take a risk to try and play uh, the travel season at all. Fast forward from May to July, where we're getting ready to start our high school season, same problem exists. What do we do? How do we go about training kids in a safe environment? What are we supposed to do? Do we let them come out and train or do we not train at all? Are we even gonna have a season? Because it did come to that point, you know? Are we even gonna have a season? So a decision was made, which I believe was a great decision, to allow coaches to start working with kids. But only um, groups of 10 kids per coach. Mm -hmm. And if you think about that, for example, I had about 40 kids on my high school team who sh showed up, say, we're going to sign up. We want to try out to be on the team. And pre-COVID, I only had one assistant coach. And we could manage that because there was no rules about, hey, it's got to be 10 kids per coach. Right. So the challenge there now became, how do I and my assistant coach schedule this out? To where we're able to train all these kids within the time that we used to have allotted for practice well mm -hmm. that's impossible yeah because you can't train 40 kids with just one assistant in the, in the same amount of time that we used to train the whole team mm -hmm. uh, so but we worked through all of this worked with the um the athletic department at the high school 
the school board, the local health, um, the health, uh, I keep wanting to say district, the health department, Mm -hmm. you know, they sent us some guidelines that we did our best to follow. Um, We were very fortunate to use some of the, uh, the PPE money that was allocated to schools to buy disinfectants and hand sanitizer and just play stations all around the field so the kids could come in with their masks on. I mean, it, it, it was brutal. It was yeah. brutal. The the players did not, as you can imagine with, with kids, did not want to follow the rules. Mm-hmm. But the only thing that kept them going was the threat of, if you don't follow these rules, we cannot be out here. Yeah. And, and I know you guys are tired of just being at home. Mm-hmm. This is giving you an opportunity to not go crazy at home or drive your parents crazy as well. So for whatever amount of time we allotted for you to come out here and get some, some practice time in, mm-hmm. just follow these simple rules. You come in, we check your temperature, you, you, you answer all these questions in the questionnaire about where you've been, how you've been feeling, all that other stuff mm-hmm. that everyone had to go through throughout that period. And as long as everything's good, you're allowed to train. Your temperature is a little high, it might not be COVID, we're not going to take that chance. We're just going to send you home. Mm-hmm. We got to keep everyone else, else safe, you know. Um, and honestly... Without some of the parent volunteers who helped us with all this stuff, again, with just one assistant working with 40 kids, it would have been impossible to do all of this stuff. So we had a lot of support, uh, again, from the school, the local health department, and from our parent group. Um, And they let us train, again, the Kentucky High School uh, sports and athletics association they kept trying they had all these board meetings almost once a week right mm-hmm. um trying to figure out what to do because we had kids training for about a month with no no idea if they're going to play any games right uh, so a month later obviously you can tell some of the kids are like yeah this is pointless we're just training. There's no, back to that statement, no light at the end of this tunnel. Yeah. What What do we do? I mean, I don't want to just keep showing up here and just training when it doesn't seem like we're going to play. So now we've gone past the start date for the high school season. Mm-hmm. And there's still no decision on whether we're going to play. Mm-hmm. You know, and we pushed all the way, because usually August about, second week of August is when we start playing games uh but we're into September and still don't know if we're going to play uh but we end up playing a shortened season thank god uh and from that point all the way to the end of the season the challenges there were trying not to have any kid on your team uh get exposed or get sick because that means your whole team's out two weeks, mm. you know. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're dealing with all this stuff. We had some games canceled because the opposing team had situations like what we were trying to avoid. Fortunately for our team, um, we never had any cases. Uh, of course, we had one or two scares, but no cases. You know, very fortunate because that was actually pretty unusual if you think about it with mm-hmm. how how much that was going around. Um, But we made it through the season. And uh, it's not really because of our preparation or anything, but we were able to make it all the way to our region finals, uh, which is as far as our school has ever been, to be honest with you, Mm. uh, despite everything we had to deal with. So wow, it was rough, but... We had a pretty good season. Oh, that is fantastic. Um, Going further than your team has ever been under 
stress under, you know, yeah. really, a, a lot of stress and a lot of uncertainty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I don't know, man. It's, you know, they say humans are pretty resilient and we are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was definitely a test of how resilient we could be. Right. But it's not something I'd want to go through again. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was, as I was listening to you tell that story and that's the reason that I wanted you to share it is, is for that very reason, the, the resilience and the, you know, and the test and all of that, because that is what this has been. That is absolutely what this has been. And it's been very interesting to see how different people react or respond to yes. Yeah. life not no longer working as we knew it yeah you know? like I was thinking about as you were talking about having to um, you know fill out the questionnaire and have your temperature taken and things like that back then when that first started I'm sure that was uh, maybe a problem right mm-hmm. now it was. It was. now it's like Okay. Yeah. We, we, we just become used to it. It's, it's a thing. thing you it's, do. Yeah. It's, it's a it's thing, you thing you do. It's do. expected now that when we go places, you know, that we're going to, you know, we're going to have our temperature check that we're going to, you know, be asked some questions that we're going to, you know, have these things. It's just. So to your point, let yeah. me tell you what's funny about what's uh, what's going on now as we're sort of slowly starting to move back to. And I don't even know if I want to use the word normal here. Right. Uh, Because I don't know what normal is anymore. Mm -hmm. But CDC guidance has moved to where if you're outdoors and there's less than a thousand people, Mm -hmm. you don't have to mask up anymore. Mm -hmm. I was out at practice a few days ago and I had my mask on. Even mm-hmm. though I knew I didn't have to have a mask on, mm-hmm. you know, and and, and, I, and after practice, I was thinking about why I really did that. And I really can't answer that because I would rather not have a mask on, mm-hmm. clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, I can breathe better. I can breathe better. I can, the um, when I speak and try to instruct the kids, I'm much clearer without a mask on. Yeah. You know, your voice again, projection is not, you it, know, I mean, again, yeah. it's just, yeah, it's just, it, I'm better off coaching without the mask on. Sure. But for some reason, I just wasn't at a place mentally where I felt like I was ready to not have a mask on around other people. Hmm. So this is now the reverse of what happened at the beginning when people didn't want to have masks on Mm -hmm. you know uh so i don't know i don't know it's just going to be interesting to see uh how people adjust again because now it's another adjustment on the other side yeah adjust again to to getting back to normal yeah or yeah Yeah. whatever that is whatever Whatever that is whatever that might be now Mm -hmm. so how did you feel the other thing that I wanted to ask you about the, the story with the, with the soccer season is how, how did you feel about that light at the end of the tunnel? Kind of it, it kept moving farther away. Right. I mean, for yeah. you as well. So we talked about yeah. what it was like for the kids. Mm-hmm. Well, the there, there's some, there's some similarities in how the kids felt to how the coaches felt Mm -hmm. uh, because as a coach, your routine is instruction, instruction, practice, practice, play a game. Mm -hmm. Take from what, take what you learn from the game, practice, practice, try and fix your problems, go back and play the game. Mm -hmm. Routine, as you said, routine. Yeah. We we just kept training. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not our normal flow. Mm -hmm. we just don't train just for the sake of training so as much as we did everything we could to motivate the kids to keep coming out and training Mm -hmm. because you don't want to take that chance 
of telling the kids, hey, don't worry about coming to practice until we find out if we're going to play because then other yeah. teams are training. And if the decision was made that you would play games, your team would be way out of shape as a, you know, compared to the other teams who've been training. Mm -hmm. But part of the issue was not just motivating the kids, but motivating ourselves as coaches to just keep going. Cause I'm not going to lie. It started to feel like we were just going through the motions. Yeah. I want to know what you, what, how, how you, how you kept going. The thing, the only, the only thing that kept us going was um, knowing why we do this. Mm -hmm. If this was just for me, I probably would have gotten to a point where I would have said, okay, I'm not doing this because Mm -hmm. every week you guys push your decision to the next week. And it was starting to seem too familiar. You know why? Because if you go back to March Madness, they told us two weeks. We'll let you know. Yeah. And it was starting to seem too familiar. Yeah. And so when they kept saying every week, now we'll let you know next week. Mm -hmm. To someone like me, and I'm not going to speak for any other coaches, but I'm sure they felt the same. It just was starting to sound too familiar. Mm -hmm. And I really got to the point where I thought, they just want us to help these kids stay engaged. We're really not going to play games. Yeah. But that's the key about the whole thing, too, is realizing that you were doing this for the benefit of the players. Right. And not for yourself. Hmm. And, and that's something that any high school coach will tell you because we don't make any money doing this. Mm-hmm. We get paid. But if you compare that to the amount of time we put in to do the job, you have to be in this for the love of what you do. Mm-hmm. And so you circle back to this might be pointless for me as a coach because the normal rhythm of practice, game, practice, practice, game is out the window so for me as a coach this serves no purpose but the purpose now is keeping the kids engaged because they know as well because you know if you think about it at this point in september they're already back in school Mm -hmm. a lot of these players only count on the fact that they can participate in sports if they keep their grades up. Mm. So if you take that away from a lot of them, you just lose them. You completely lose the kids, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, And imagine getting kids uh, to, to go to school in a normal world. Some of those kids just don't want to even be at school. But right. if, they, if they're going to participate in sports, they're motivated. Hey, you know what? I'll do what I need to do so I can play on game day. Mm-hmm. Now, imagine the, the other issues that arose where, hey, now school was virtual. They weren't even going to school. They couldn't interact with their friends. They're at home all the time. Mm-hmm. There's no engagement even with the teachers because, again, no physical engagement. Right. You know, you have a, a time slot that you have to sign in and be at, at a, in a virtual classroom, mm-hmm. you know. And, and so a lot of kids were just getting to the point where, and we got the feedback from the school. Hey, you know, you got so-and-so player. We haven't seen them in the virtual class for a week. Yeah. <laughs> Can you reach out and figure out what's going on? And that's the role we started playing as coaches. It wasn't even about the games anymore. You know, hmm. so it so was that's a, what kept that's what kept us going, to be honest. It was a greater purpose, right? Than Absolutely. what you have had. You know, yes. you had the purpose, but it became even greater, greater. as mm-hmm. a result of 
everything changing, as well as coming back and remembering your why. Then you That's probably it. had to do remembering that. your why. Yeah, really became the focus. Yeah, yeah. all over again. Yeah, because you do lose. You do lose yourself at times, and once you establish a routine, right? right. You do lose yourself mm -hmm. when it comes to the why. Mm -hmm. And just like a lot of people will tell you, the pandemic reshifted everyone's focus. Yeah. Whether it was in your professional life or in your personal life, mm -hmm. that why. Mm -hmm. came all the way back to the surface for most of us if not yeah. everyone yeah. yeah it really has I know I have learned so much I've learned so much about others and I've definitely learned so much about myself through this process for sure um yeah that's that's powerful stuff I think it's a good segue too because as you were talking about reaching out to your uh your kids being your players about virtual school at the same time you have a couple of kids at home doing virtual school and yeah. with your <laughs> your face right? the audience can't see the face right now but this is what this this is what i want to get to because <laughs> because um you work in it so i mean it, really the work that you do is commuting to an office to sit in front of a computer so transitioning to virtual work for you was probably not that difficult and, and and then you know the kids I um I do know that Kentucky has a you know has a pretty robust system in terms of um online learning um however I know that also um the teachers very likely went through something similar in that okay this is just going to be for two weeks this is just going to be for <laughs> next week you know that kind of thing because That's I know right. for me because I know for me as a parent here what happened with our school closures was exactly that we went on spring break and then they said, you know what, we're going to just extend that by a week and then <laughs> just by one week and then another week and then, you know, another week. So, so that was going on with parents and teachers as well. That same thing that you just described with the, mm -hmm. you know, the soccer. So tell me how, uh, and, and I want to add too that your wife is she she works in medical yes she works yeah, in the medical she's field a nurse. She's, she's a, a nurse, nurse yeah. so she's an essential worker during yes. all of this yes so I am envisioning this is you at home with the kids all day working while they school that's right. right okay that's right how'd that go <laughs> well. As with most things that I do, I, I try the best I can to be upbeat about things. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I was in the beginning. You know, I'd say, <laughs> hey, I get, I get this. I get this. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. I get this. I'll wake up. I'll make breakfast. They'll come down. You know, they'll eat. All right, everybody go to your corner. You're over here, you're over there. Mm -hmm. And for the first few weeks, like I said, when they told us it'll be another two weeks, you're thinking, this ain't a big deal. Nah. I can handle this. I got this. For two weeks, yeah. I can handle this, you know. <laughs> two months later, <laughs> <laughs> different story different story now. because it's just it's it's hard enough and really newfound respect for anyone in education right any educators out there newfound respect not that we didn't respect them before but just yeah just experiencing what they go through every day times I don't know, 10, right? Because you only have the one or two kids at home. Right. And these right. people have, I don't know, 10x those kids they're working with every day. Mm -hmm. 
what was really difficult for me was trying to work out the schedules Mm -hmm. of times from one period or one class to the other, Mm -hmm. making sure the kids were where they're supposed to be and doing what they're supposed to be doing Mm -hmm. or helping them, you know, turn in the right assignments and all that kind of stuff. It was very difficult and became even more challenging the the longer we went into this semester having to do virtual school Mm -hmm. to work those schedules out while trying to do my job as well right right and (laughs) just fast forward again from hey two weeks to two months down the road Mm -hmm doing virtual school I again I I'm someone who doesn't show a lot of emotion and so maybe my wife hadn't realized how stressed out I was Mm -hmm. going through all this stuff on a daily basis and the the most frustrating thing about what was going on at the time too if you think about it I didn't have anything to look forward to after work. Right. Your light at the end of the tunnel was no light. (sighs) So I would do that all day Mm -hmm. and couldn't go nowhere to relieve some of that stress. Mm -hmm. So it kept bubbling up and Mm -hmm. bubbling up. And when it finally got to the surface, was on the day where I found myself pouring a glass of bourbon at 7 a.m. one morning. And my wife looking at me going, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And honestly, it it almost feels like I was sleepwalking now because I really didn't realize that's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I just knew I needed a drink. (laughs) Yeah. And coffee wasn't going to do it. Yeah. In your coffee cup. I just knew cup. I needed yep. a drink. Yep. And she goes, what are you doing? I go, I don't know. I'm pouring myself a glass of bourbon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And fortunately, and this is why some places of employment, you know, are just great places to work at. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, she went to work and asked, if there was anything she could do working from home to, to provide me with some relief. Mm. And they were flexible enough to let her do some of her work Mm -hmm. a couple of days a week from home. Nice. And help me get back to, uh, help me get back to a certain level of sanity. Wow. Because well, it really got bad. Um, just trying to juggle all that stuff. Yeah. And, and here's the, here's the thing. I think it, you hadn't even recognized that it was no. bad. It was just no. like, okay, no. I've just, you know, it's just like, I, this is how I'm going to plow through. I'm going to plow through. I'm going to plow through. Oh, Correct. I'm just, oh, I'm pouring bourbon Correct. at 7 a.m. Not even thinking about it. Not thinking about it. Not even thinking about it. It's just no. like coffee isn't going to do it. I need a little yeah. kick. I need and you, something else. Yeah. And yeah. you didn't um, even that was it. acknowledge it until your wife kind of said, uh, exa- what exactly are yeah. you doing what right are you now? Doing? <laughs> yeah, that was the question. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I think it's a, I think it's important to bring up and bring to light that mm-hmm. because I can assure you, my friend, you are not the only parent out there that has done that. I imagine, I imagine not. Um, yeah, especially now, um, especially in those, in the times that we have been in and, and just, I think there are a lot of people out there who have gotten frazzled and gotten to the end of their, uh, their rope if you will and Mm -hmm. just not even acknowledged it because they just have to keep going not acknowledged how stressed and burned out that's a good point that's a good point uh acknowledgement is 
was, um, and, and for, you know, and now we're talking about maybe cultural things and stuff like that. Um, culturally, as a man, I have to show strength. Mm. And so I was never even remotely going to consider getting to a point where I was going to throw my arms up on my kids and go, I just can't do this. I'm sorry. Y'all just figure it out. And not even that, though, but even asking for help. Right? I, I think that's, yeah, that's more eloquently put than I was trying to put it. But no, 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 was, it's not. That was going to be, but, yeah. but I, was, I was leading up to that point. Well, there could be two, yeah, there could be two ways, two ways you could go with it. You could either throw your hands up and say, okay, kids, you're on your own, or you could ask for help. And neither one of those were acceptable solutions. And now that you brought that up, I just wonder if she'd already left for work. Yeah. If I was ever going to ask for help, you know, Mm -hmm. I just wonder if I would ever get to the point where I would say, look, I've been doing the best I can here, but I I, I just can't do this anymore. I think I would have probably kept trying to soldier on. Of course. I think I would have. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe develop the drinking problem. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Maybe add, add that into the, to the mix, you know, add it to your resume. I, you know, that, yeah. So what's the lesson here is it that do you think that if you had another opportunity to uh where you were faced with either throwing your hands up or asking for help that you might be able to put yourself out there again or or Um, i'm I'm sorry again for the first time actually yeah you know if you didn't have somebody calling you out i don't know i don't know the answer to that question and that's just me being honest yeah I don't know how I would react if I faced the same situation. Uh, Because again, if you think about it, I didn't ask for help. You didn't. I know you didn't. Yeah. That's why I caught myself and I said again, no, no, that's not again. It's like for the first time. I did not ask for help that time. Mm -mm. Uh, Help was provided. It was. uh, Mm -hmm. Thankfully so. But I did not ask for help, Uh, which makes me again wonder if, faced with the same situation right I would do what I normally do or if you know I'll take a lesson from what I just went through and that experience and just go before we get to this point Mm -hmm. before we get to because that that wasn't even breaking point for me right you know, but it was pretty close. It was around the corner. If you're pouring yourself a bourbon at 7 a.m., mm-hmm. then you're you're pretty close. It was a coping point for sure, but definitely on yes. the path. But yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know, uh, but that's where you come in. Uh, it I mean, is. It a, actually is. What, it, what do you think? Um, you know, I th- here's here's my thought on the matter and just from a very surface level, and I'm not coaching you right now but I'm just thinking in general um, this idea of you know culturally and men are supposed to be strong and all of these things that it really kind of lines up very nicely I think with people pleasing and that we want to show the part of ourselves that is um that that is that is strong that mm-hmm. is capable that is competent that is smart mm-hmm. that is beautiful that is you know all of the you know good things that we are yeah. that's what we want to project out to everyone else and that's what they yeah. want that's what we want them to see in us yeah so i think that that's really what um that type of behavior for lack of a better word is about it's about how will someone else see me mm-hmm. if I get vulnerable? If I hmm. do that, how will they perceive me? How will they see me? Vulnerable. Vulnerable. Yeah. 
I'll tell yeah. you another thing that weighs on me. What's that? Just to add to the uh, projecting an image of strength culturally as a man. Mm-hmm. Uh, my name, Fanyam. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I've discussed this with you before in the past. Is actually one of those names that demands that you show even more strength. Because mm. it literally translates to king of the jungle. Nice. <laughs> nice. So, mm. you know. I don't know if subconsciously stuff like that plays with my mind and, and all mm-hmm. that. I, mm-hmm. I really don't think about it, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I don't try to, you know, project an image of masculine, masculinity and strength just because my name means lion. Right. Uh, but I just wonder if somewhere in my subconscious, it's just one of those things that's like, hey, man, you can't you can't be a lion if you're out here. You yeah. can't take care of your own, you know? For sure. King. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Can't be, can't be a king. Can't be a. Yeah. 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 That. Uh, uh, why wouldn't it? I mean, why couldn't it be a subconscious indicator? You know, it's just lying there be- beneath the surface You that your very name is. Um. Yeah. yeah, strength and yeah. yeah, that's uh, that's something. That's something. I mean, I, I just I, I just thought about that as we were speaking. I think uh, it's amazing that you thought about that as we were speaking. Because it's it's also again one of those things that I don't give a lot of thought to it, but mm-hmm. you know, having conversation like this, it just makes you think. Yeah. Well, that's what coaching does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're right. So, you're so, right. you know, you may be doing, you know, um, cardio strength and conditioning and, you know, that, that kind of thing with, Correct. with, with your kids, but you know, I'm, that's, I'm doing the same thing with, with the mind really. Correct. It's yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. just kind of pulling those things out, out that we don't consider. And it's, it's so good. It's so powerful just to have a conversation sometimes. It just really it is. is. It is. Yeah. It is. Uh, and uh, and we're, I'm not talking surface conversations like right. people normally do. Uh, right. Uh, having deep conversations. Agree. Agree. And because that is one thing that, I mean, you know, coaching sessions aside that I have um, kind of tried to create as a result of everything that has happened over the past year is eliminating those surface level conversations and really getting into because look you know I I like people I do (laughs) I'm an extrovert I just am and I you know and I like I've, I've always liked having conversations with people but I mean I'm talking now I I'm this, this, how are, you know, Hey, how are you doing? Kind of thing. No, I, I mean, I mean, I really want to know how you're doing and don't tell right, me that you're right. fine. Don't tell I'm me good. that you're fine. Okay. Yeah. Or good. Those are unacceptable yeah. responses. I want to hear really, how are you? That's what I want to start. Those are the conversations I want to start having with my friends. And I still set up like zoom sessions and things with, with my friends just to hang um, and, and, and have those conversations. You know, I think it's important very important yeah so maybe that if 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 the pandemic has taught us anything Mm -hmm. and i know again we're starting to transition Mm -hmm. back to where there's a sense of normalcy right and at least it looks that way (laughs) i don't know what that means right right we don't that whole perspective that we we gained from living through the the worst part Mm -hmm. of the pandemic uh, I, I really, I really hope that doesn't go away. Uh, but I'm afraid it's it's gonna, because that's just the way we are as humans, right? You mm-hmm. just, you, you, we tend to to gravitate back to um, to the way things were when we were comfortable. Well, here's what I think. I agree with you on the, you know, on the the, the comfort part and and gravitating back to um, the thing. 
I also think that my position is this, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And the, the other friends that I have on this podcast too, I have said a a few times that as long as I'm showing up and shining my light and doing Mm. my thing, then Mm. I am creating a ripple. I'm creating a ripple and then, then the next person and the next person. So if we can just, if we just go ahead and, and just keep doing our thing and, and lead by example, you know, you're, you're a coach, you're a leader, you, you know, that, um, you know, exactly how to do that. Then what's stopping us? I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question though. (laughs) And, uh-huh. and, and not be so concerned about what everyone else is doing. I mean, it could be an observation, but I mm-hmm. think, but I do think that it um, is almost contagious mm-hmm. when, you, when you start having those conversations and someone will walk away from having a conversation with you and feel like, oh, I, I just connected. That was a connection. That was more than just a surface level conversation. We just connected. And that felt really good to me. Let me see if I can create that again with this other person over here. Right. right. You know? Yeah. I mean, the possibilities are, are there. Yeah. They really are. I, I agree with you. So, so uh, when do I get to ask questions? Oh, you can ask me questions. What you want. <laughs> you you know, know, no, so just out of curiosity, because you and I haven't talked about this, okay. I'm intrigued by your transition, because you know, in your former life, mm-hmm. where we worked together, uh-huh. you were in IT. I was. And yeah. I'm loving this transition Yay. to what you're doing now. Okay. Yeah. So how'd, uh, how'd that happen? let's let's talk a little bit about that yeah I've told this story a few times I'll um you know so I'll keep it I'll keep it brief I I mean but I I think that uh for any first time listeners I won't make you listen to the whole oh, library you and, I, you and I are catching up yeah just I know yeah up. yeah right okay so I I did I had I had a couple of jobs as you know I mean because we've kept in touch even after after mm-hmm. I, I moved here mm-hmm. um as you know I had a couple of jobs here um mm-hmm. as in IT and uh, they just, you know, one, one contract, one was a contract that ended, one was a reorg and, you know, I got reorged right off the org, uh-huh. <laughs> right out of the org. And I think that was a moment, that second one for me was a moment of uh, like definitely going in and in deep introspection and saying, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Because this, just right. doesn't, this whole right. idea, the whole idea, Fanyam, of going back and, and looking for another job just it just made me ill thinking about mm. it I was just mm. like I I like playing the game and putting in the keywords on all the you know on, and all that and find, finding your you know getting the resume and, and networking and all that I was just like yeah. Ugh. that just I, I just it just made me cringe and so I just started yeah, searching just, just the same way I felt about whenever you mentioned the Steelers yeah <laughs> <laughs> You are rotten. I swear. I'm going to get you for that. I am going to get you for that. That's okay. No, I feel you. I'm just saying I relate. I relate. Yeah, yeah. You relate to, you relate to that feeling. It's ridiculous. Oh, you are such an asshole. By the way, I swear on this podcast all the time. So whatever you want to say. Um, as we're this far into it now, I say that. Um, here's the thing. I had a conversation with a friend uh, uh, and she, so, so was talking about feelings, right. Talking about mm-hmm. those, those, those emotions, those mm-hmm. that absolute ick emotion. She, when she told me, she said, I have a friend who's studying to be a life coach and in so doing, she has to work on herself and she is loving it. Hmm. And it's just like that hit me in a whole different way that hit me in the, Oh, that's what's a life coach. <laughs> I mean, I went home, we were having a, we were um, at having lunch together and I went home and I started researching what a life coach is. I didn't know. Interesting. But it Interesting. hit me, I, it just hit me when she said that it was like this, this, this feeling inside of me was just like, 
oh, work on yourself. Because listen, I was depressed. I was so depressed. I can imagine. Losing two jobs, boom, boom, Mm -hmm. you know, all of that in a place that I um, didn't know anyone. You know, I was still, you know, still trying to figure that out. I tried to tell you not to leave us. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, I know, you know. Uh, So, yeah, it just, uh, and that the rest is history. But isn't that crazy, though? That, I mean, it's just, it well, well, it's not but, crazy. It's not crazy. Well, it's, it what, it's the way it was meant no, to be. No, really, it is. It, it is. Because uh, a, for a, an off conversation at lunch mm-hmm. to lead you into yeah. a direction like this, which I feel is a really good fit for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Because, you know, we've had a lot of conversations in the past. So mm-hmm. I, I'm speaking here from, yeah. you know, pretty good perspective right um i really i really like what you're doing uh, i do because i think it fits you really well awesome yeah and it's, it's not just extrovert. about you being an extrovert it's about just how you connect with people mm. and i can't imagine a life coach who can't make good connections with people like i don't know how that works yeah you know? yeah yeah. Thank you. Thank you for saying that, my friend. That oh, sure. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, 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 it feels right. It's like, oh, this is what I, I was supposed to be doing. And, you know, back to the, it, it, that's, that's when everything just started clicking and falling into place. But in, in hindsight, in retrospect, it's like, well, when I think about me being in IT, it's because, well, it's what I knew. And mm-hmm. I was com- and I was comfortable with it, right? And we've mm-hmm. talked about that in a couple of different ways today with that conversation, doing what you know, doing what you're comfortable with, being, you know, having those yeah. routines. Yeah. And those routines, like fine, you know, I know how to manage projects. Let's just go, let's just go there. Does it light me up? No. Not even a little <laughs> bit. Not even a little bit. Oh man. <laughs> Anything else you want to know? before we wrap no i just i just uh i want to know how you're getting along down there in texas you know the texas Mm. people are different folks man they are they are there's some really good people here the people that i have met um the people that i have connected with are good people they're fun people to be around yeah that's good yeah and I do think, and, and here's what I think, I think that, I think this is important to, uh, to bring up too. I think that, um, cause we, every now and then we, we'll talk about manifesting, right? I'll, I'll tell you the things that I manifest. <laughs> and I think that when I have a lens, when I look at the world through, and when I look at my surroundings through a lens of everything's not, not, not that everything's great, but that everything is happening exactly the way that it's supposed to happen. Right? Oh, wow. Yeah. Right? Everything's yeah. happening exactly. And, and, if, and if I take that with me to the corner grocery store, if I take yeah. that with me to wherever it is that I go, I'm just in, and I have a, a feeling of ease around others that way. And I, I, I think I just show up. And, and I, with a better energy and I bring that to wherever I am. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Yeah. Can I share something with you Please. as far as that's concerned? Yeah. And I'm not sharing this with you to make you feel like I'm a good person or to make your audience feel like I'm a good person, mm-hmm. but it's just to relate to exactly what you just said. Uh, yesterday, I found myself at a place where I shouldn't have been if everything else during the day had gone as it was supposed to go. Mm. And I know you're not very religious, but I believe in the power of divine intervention. Okay. And I think God put me in a place yesterday where I was supposed to be to help someone that needed help. Mm -hmm. I, um, we had a long day yesterday. Uh, and I did my wife 
and her back she has back pain every now and then and her mm-hmm. back started hurting so she couldn't do the rest of the stuff that we were supposed to do so i said hey don't worry about it i'm gonna take to her appointment to get her hair done mm-hmm. and of course as i'm taking uh say hey run by kroger and pick up a couple of things for me mm-hmm. yeah i can do that no problem Mind you, I wasn't supposed to be at any of these places. Mm-hmm. Of course, on my way to Kroger, her gas light comes up. I stop at the Kroger station right before I go in the store. I said, because I was going to go in the store first. Mm-hmm. I really was. But something said, hey, just go ahead and get the gas first. Mm-hmm. And I go and I'm pumping my gas and I get done. And I'm putting the hose back in place. And a young lady walks up to me and says, sir, I really hate to bother you. But my mother would like to ask you a question. And I go, excuse me. What would your mother like to ask me? random young lady (laughs) she she goes i I really don't know but i think she was scared to tell me i really don't know it's like okay well let's go talk to your mother it's broad daylight it's not like something bad could happen to me right here Mm -hmm. walk down to the car sir my name is blah 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 this is my daughter blah 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 i really hate to approach you like this i just found out my brother passed away. My brother lives in Memphis. I need to get down there. And I have absolutely no money. If there's anything you could do to help us out. Tears are running down her eyes. Tears are running down her daughter's eyes. I can tell they do not want to be in the position they're in. Mm -hmm. I go, well, ma'am, I'll be more than happy to help you. I don't know what's in my wallet, but I'll go ahead and fish it out and give it to you. I said, but I'm going to need for you to stop crying. She goes, I, I just can't help it. I got the news. I, I'm just in a situation where I can't even go support my family. Mm-hmm. I go, okay. You know, I'll open my wallet up. And again, Remember what I told you in the beginning. I'm not trying to prove to anyone I'm a good person because this to me is a story about divine intervention. Mm -hmm. That's just the way I'm looking at it Mm -hmm. and being at the right place at the right time, Mm -hmm. which goes back to your point. Yeah. I had a really big bill in my wallet and normally I'm not giving all of this to some stranger. I just gave it to her. Yeah. I just gave it to her and she couldn't believe it. And she started crying some more. I'm not a very emotional person. As I've told you before, I felt a wave of emotion Mm -hmm. and she's going with the God bless you's and all that. And I was like, ma'am, I'm going to tell you something. God's actually just blessed you today through me because I wasn't supposed to be where I am right now. Right. And if I had made all the other moves that I was supposed to make, Mm -hmm. you would not be talking to me right now. Mm -hmm. And I've been carrying that feeling all day yesterday. I came, uh, I went in the store actually, and I sent a text message and I said, you won't believe what just happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I told her the exact same story and she, she just, she was floored. She mm-hmm. was floored, just as I still am. So about being at the right place at the right time, that's something that we, we sometimes fail to understand how the universe works, yep. why we end up being where we are. I was talking to you about, hey, you know, you shouldn't have left us here in Kentucky to go mm-hmm. where you are. Mm-hmm. But look at what that has done for you. Yeah, what if I stayed? Yeah. Hey, man, you'd still be managing our project. I know. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it was fun, but not nearly. I'm not saying it wasn't. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah, yeah. it wasn't. Yeah, I, I know. But no, I absolutely, I 100% agree with you. And I thank you for sharing that story. And I do believe in divine intervention. I do believe, um, you know, I just don't practice Christianity or any religion. I absolutely, what you call God, I call the universe, right? Mm. It's just a different spin on the same belief really that everything happens the way it's supposed to happen and yes you were placed in that position you were put there i really believe yeah, so you were i believe i that don't too. think that was uh yeah. you know i mean some people would call it chance and whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it chance mm -hmm. i'm calling it divine intervention because sure. i really was not supposed to be over there right right yeah there's and a even lot going of... all the way to kroger i was supposed mm -hmm. to go in the store first mm-hmm Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to get the gas first. It's intuition. I mean, that's what it is. It was your in intuition that you that you followed, even though it probably seemed like it was, um, you know, just a, a decision in the moment. A that you know, moment decision, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Something led you there, right? And Something, le some, some led you to Texas. Something led you to that's Texas. Right. That's right. And something led and me to have it. and have that conversation and have it's that lunch, lunch with a friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I never would have considered it. Other, I don't. It was not even on my radar. It was not on my radar. How about that? I know it's amazing. It's amazing. I just need divine intervention right now <laughs> to to force me in the direction of uh, hitting it big so I can retire. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, why, don't why we? Why hasn't that happened? <laughs> <laughs> that is another episode. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I could talk to you all day. It's been a while since we got to catch up. So I, but I'll wrap up the episode for our listeners. Um, any parting words? I mean, let, here's, here's the thing you all, um, to those of you listening, normally this is where I would say, okay, and you can, you know, find him here, here, here's the website. Here's, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> but my friend Fonium is a ghost. I mean, he is literally, <laughs> there is, you do not have an online presence at all. Um, and that's not why I asked you to be here. I asked you to be here. I asked you to, to come here as, as a, a friend, as a coach, as a father. And I knew you would have some good stories for us. Oh man. You, you know, I, I think I heard the other day when I told you, yeah, I don't have anything to share as far as my online presence. I do have something okay. which we had to do because it's a professional thing. But I'm on LinkedIn and that's it. That's the only okay. place you're going to ever find me. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you know, that's the only place. But uh, no, I, I appreciate you having me on uh, this part of your your podcast where you have people share about, you know, where they can find them and all that. Just like I told you, there'd be nothing there for me. Mm -mm. No. This is it. You know where this they can find it. me? They can find me on your podcast. Right here. Yeah, right here. Yeah. I know, but it's been a great conversation. It's a great, it's a great place to, it's a great place to find you. I'm so glad you've done this. This is well. This I'm wonderful. glad you. Uh, I'm glad you had me on here. I'm yeah. glad you had me on here. It's my second ever. Yes. As a guest on a podcast. Yes, and I mean, I think you have been bitten by the bug, and you're just going to keep making the rounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know about all that. I'm not that interesting. Oh, sure you are. Yeah. All right, my friend, you have yourself a wonderful day. Thank right, you bye. so much. Thank you. Bye. I absolutely appreciated every bit of what Afanyam and I just talked about, and I hope you did too. He was just full of surprises today. In all the years I've known him, I had no idea that he spoke French. What? I'm so grateful for Fanyam's willingness to be open and honest and to be able to share this with you all today. Thanks, man. Really. I think my favorite part was him saying the work that I'm doing now is so well suited for me. I couldn't agree more. And this is coming from someone who knew me in my past life and the role I played in a completely different movie. So that was a meaningful statement for me. I love it when the universe puts us where we need to be when we need to be there. I also think it's very important to highlight the resistance to asking for help. I don't believe this is strictly a male perspective. I think there are females listening right now who can also relate. 
especially with what we've all been going through over the past year. However, I do believe that it's more likely that the expectation to project strength at all times is more prominent for males in our society. And when you have a name that literally embodies that, yeah, that's really next level. I also think it's possible that as we grow older and have more life experiences under our belts, if you will, that we begin to recognize our lifelong conditioning. Maybe we start to question it. And maybe, just maybe, we can step outside of those invisible walls we have built up for our protection and allow ourselves to open up to other possibilities. Like the possibility of asking for help when you're damn near drowning. Like the possibility of even seeing yourself enough to recognize that you might just need help. None of us are completely free of the fear of being judged by others, myself included. We do want to be seen as competent, capable, and complete, strong as leaders. Here's the thing. If you listen to my last episode on anxiety, stress is very similar in that the more that you try to ignore it and pretend that it isn't there, the more that you lie to everyone else around you and most importantly to yourself, the harder it's going to hit you eventually. It won't be right away, but it will build and build. And if you thought it was uncomfortable in the beginning, let me tell you, It's going to be so much more painful later if you keep pushing it away. That's how our our emotions work, my friends. They are meant to be felt. As Rumi says, and I've used this quote before because it's so very meaningful, these pains you feel are messengers. Listen to them. So whether it's anxiety or stress you're feeling, I've got you. I'm including links in the show notes to either set up a one-on-one coaching session with me or preview my course, Feel Better Than Fine No Matter What. Let's start to go deeper than surface level and make those meaningful connections that we are here for. Connect with me. Connect with someone. Anyone who can be trusted to hold the space you need without judgment. Find that awareness and reach out today. Light up, shine on.